There's a mystery to knife throwing I must solve. Shoving a knife into wood just doesn't work, even with all my weight behind it. Yet throwing one goes in easy, and trying to stab one isn't much better than slowly pressing with my weight. What? So what is it about thrown knives that makes them sink so deep into a target? In this episode, we use science to analyze the speed, energy, and rotation of thrown versus stabbed knives and accidentally uncover the secret of why Wolverine from X-Men is so effective. When most of us think of stabbing, we picture movies of a bad guy with a knife. But that's not what this video is about. So put your own knives safely away where no one will get hurt and enjoy watching me do some cutting edge science. Physics teaches us the energy of a moving object like a baseball is equal to half the mass times the square of the velocity, or one half mv squared. But this formula literally applies to everything, be it a bullet, my bronco, or a cat. And according to that equation, adding your own body mass to the mass of the baseball should give a massive increase in kinetic energy. And when I try it, the entire target moves with my body. Given that extra mass doesn't help a stab knife, could the rotation of a thrown one be the key? If you've ever turned a bicycle upside down and spun the drive wheel, it's obvious there's energy there. But this is rotational kinetic energy. The formula looks just like kinetic energy, except we replace velocity with angular velocity and the mass with this capital I. I stands for moment of inertia about an axis. It basically says how heavy the tire is and how far away that weight is from the axis. So while this road bike can store substantial energy in the wheels, it's no comparison to a mountain bike. That's one of the reasons mountain bikes take more effort to pedal. You're storing more rotational kinetic energy in the wheels. But even though knives aren't as big as a bike tire, they still have some rotational kinetic energy when they spin. But does it play a role in how well the knife sticks? As viewers were quick to point out in the comments, it is possible to throw a knife with little to no spin and get it to stick. But has anyone actually compared the velocity of these no spin throws? I have to admit, when I compare my no spin throw to a conventional throw, the velocities do look pretty close. But to be absolutely certain, we need our computerized knife throwing machine. But it's gotten some upgrades since the last time you saw it. For instance, the ability to change the number of spins on the fly. My son programmed it so you can just bump this rocker switch up or down and the microprocessor sets the motor speeds accordingly. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But let's see how it works. First, a quarter spin throw. Now, one and a quarter spin. And finally, two and a quarter spins. These are all consecutive, all from the same distance. I intended to take precise measurements of depth, but in reality, we're really looking for a substantial difference, and these all look pretty much the same. And if we overlay all three videos, we can see they left the thrower and reached the target within milliseconds of each other. So I have to conclude my theory about the rotation of a thrown knife being a contributor to depth is not correct. So at this point, I have no answers and am no closer than I was a year ago when I started this project. But there is one more thing we can try that may shed some light on why these knives perform the way they do. My hydraulic press has gauges allowing me to graph force and distance while pushing stuff like a knife into wood. Naturally, the deeper it goes, the more force it takes. But here's the cool part. Adding up the area under the curve tells us the energy needed to get to each depth. And since we already know the equation for kinetic energy, we can plot a new line for the speed of the knife that, in theory, would be needed to get to each depth. To test it, I'm engaging in a stabathon, sticking the knife into the target over and over while recording with a high speed camera. The footage lets me calculate velocity of the stab by comparing the distance on the scale to the number of frames in the video. Marking the knife with a pen before pulling it out lets me measure depth pretty precisely. Naturally, I have to repeat the experiment with the knife throwing machine, which is super accurate, but can only throw knives up to a certain speed. 
To get even faster than that, I have to resort to throwing the knives as hard as I can, hoping they actually there stick in the target. Fortunately, I only had to get it right a couple of times and didn't get myself hurt in the process. So how does the new data compare to our graph? The airborne knives are pretty close, just slightly shallower than predicted by our velocity depth line. So not bad. But check out the stabs. They're even closer, but are all slightly deeper than predicted. And here's the shocker. That red line is based on the weight of the knife alone, as if my hand wasn't even there. According to the data, my hand, arm, and body have almost zero effect on depth. It's worth noting that even my hardest stab knife is substantially slower than the slowest thrown knife. Let's start by looking at that and then come back to the mass thing. Comparing a side profile of me throwing versus stabbing, it's obvious why the thrown knife is faster. Just look at the two levers starting at my elbow and wrist. Mechanical advantage converts the torque of my elbow into a long, fast arc, accelerating the knife with ease. In contrast, when stabbing, we're down to a single lever, which barely gets started before the knife strikes the board. As a result, the knife barely goes any faster than the elbow. Okay, so the stab knife is slower, but what about the additional mass of my body? Shouldn't that compensate for the reduced speed? Well, take a closer look at my hand as the knife strikes the target. In every case, the knife stops, but my hand tries to keep going. This is because the flesh of the palm of my hand doesn't start to compress until the knife stops and pushes back on it. So though the bones of my hand and arm do have far more mass than the knife, since they're not directly attached to the knife, they basically don't count. But imagine if the knives were fused to my bones, like Wolverine from Marvel Dude. Comics. Since there's no flesh cushioning his adamantium blades, their kinetic energy does benefit from his body mass. Hard to say if that was part of the idea behind the character, but I know I'll never look at Wolverine the same way again. Class dismissed. It does give me an idea, though. I may not be able to build knives into my hand, but I can build one into a hand dull. And if depth comes from speed and speed comes from levers, then how deep could a levered knife go? Normally, I wouldn't be able to 3D print something this large, but Form Labs was kind enough to lend me one of their larger Form 3L printers, which is just big enough for these parts. And to make sure they don't shatter the first time I use it, I'm trying a more flexible resin called Durable. I'll admit the idea of using a material with a lower strength to prevent breakage sounds odd, but I'm willing to give it a try and see what happens. The consistency is about what I'd expect from a synthetic axe handle from the hardware store, which makes me feel a bit better about my choice. And though the individual pieces were able to flex quite a bit, now that it's all screwed together, I think I see the wisdom behind the material. Now let's see if we can add some new data points to our graph. Right away, I can tell this thing is sticking the knife deeper in the target with less effort. So much so that at max speed, the wood is starting to split. I'm so concerned it's messing up my data, I'm literally taking another stab at it, making sure I hit the center of one of the boards. But even then, it still splits the wood. Well, let's just get our measurements and see where they fall. To my surprise, the speed and depth calculations align extremely well with the theoretical prediction. And even though we've gone deeper than the gauge on my press can measure, if we project the data, the two strikes where we crack the wood align extremely well. Given the additional mass of the plastic handle, I'm shocked the data is this close. But let's return to that kinetic energy equation. While mass is directly proportional to energy, velocity is squared. So ultimately, velocity has a much greater influence on depth, which is proven out with our graph. The only thing left to do now is to throw this thing like an axe. And if you watched the first knife machine video, you'll remember my initial exposure to axe throwing was on Brilliant, an online learning platform that helps you learn STEM interactively. Remember our graph where we measured the energy of a pressed knife into wood, then compared it to the kinetic energy of a thrown knife? Those exact principles are contained in Brilliant's lessons on energy from their classic mechanics course. The analysis greatly simplified our complex problem and very accurately predicted the performance while swinging our 3D printed axe. And yes, there's some calculus in there, 
but Brilliant has beginner to advanced lessons on that too. I went through their calculus in a nutshell course this morning and was surprised how simple calculus can be explained when using interactive examples you can do at your own pace. I paid thousands of dollars to learn this stuff in college, but you can learn it yourself right here on Brilliant. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org forward slash quintbuilds, and the first 200 of you will get a 20% discount off a premium membership. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thank you for considering Brilliant. Now I'm more than a little scared to throw this axe in my shop, and it hasn't exactly been throwing weather outside. But lucky for me, the Celtic Axe is just minutes away in Beaverton, Oregon, with several throwing bays and professionals that actually know what they're doing. They confirm the length and weight of their axes, do indeed determine the rotation distance, and anticipated my lighter axe would likely have a shorter distance per rotation. But have no fear, they knew how to hold and throw my axe differently to compensate, getting a solid stick on the first try. And me? Not so much. I eventually got it to stick, but not before breaking off a small piece at the top that apparently didn't need to be there. I made an attempt to collect some depth data, but since they have proper end grain targets, it didn't really correlate to my numbers back home. And of course my trip wouldn't be complete without the knife throwing machine, which naturally was right at home. And after getting used to the regular sound of axes thumping into wood, <laughs> the knife throwing machine sounded like some kind of silent weapon from a video game. But I was really impressed with the facility and staff, so if you've ever considered trying a place like this, you totally should. That's all. Some of you might be wondering where I found a hard case for a one-of-a-kind knife throwing machine. The answer is SKB cases. Once I selected a case, they provided a complete CAD model I inserted into my model of the thrower. That made it super easy to design a foam insert that supported the structural parts with clearance around the fragile ones. SKB's custom shop then CNC cut the interior foam for a perfect fit without ever having seen my thrower. So if you ever need a case to protect something important of yours, make sure you check out skbcases.com. I realize it's hard to believe that the mystery of why a throw knife goes so easily into wood was in fact the driver for us building a knife throwing machine. But now that that mystery is solved, we can move on to the next crazy project. So as always, please like, subscribe, look for us on Patreon, and that way we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Got a cold there, ghost face. Maybe snot face is a better <laughs> descriptor. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll go with ghost face. <laughs> Aha! It was you the whole time! <laughs> Don't hurt yourself.